It's Monday. It's October 21st. And the word of the day is once again, vote. <laughs> yes. In the sentence, vote right now. And then call everyone you know in Pennsylvania and tell them to vote right now. Then yes. same thing for the other swing states. Then same thing for everywhere else. Popular vote matters too. Well, I mean, who knows? You might be cool with a conservative president swapping out Alito and Thomas for high schoolers. That's that right. could also uh, be. It yeah. makes tricky. That's yeah. Supreme Court Justice Charlie Kirk to you. <laughs> oh, no, God. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Cecil Something Italian. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, TikTok notices that their fingers appear to be in some kind of steeple. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch McConnell says the ridiculously obvious. And we learn that the logical endpoint of AI singularity is a literal gaping butthole. Ah, <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, Cecil, something Italian, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, we are 15 days out. From election day. Jesus Christ. How are you feeling right now? I just want to never talk about Donald Trump again unless it's to announce he's going to jail. Can we make that happen, America? Is that possible? <laughs> I mean, I'd be willing to discuss him being eaten by a wide variety of animals, Cecil. You got to open your mind, <laughs> bud. So a lot of brainstorming, workshopping. I like it. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about some of the politics stuff, but uh, we're going to get into some legal stuff first. In our lead story tonight, there's a theory it's been going around for a while that says TikTok is part of a big digital espionage program run by the government of China. No. And, <laughs> and to the extent that, TikTok? that, well, I mean, almost every app on your phone is also exactly that. The funny and, dance app? Come on. You're <laughs> pulling my leg. I am serious. Your phone itself is exactly that. In the financiers. Yeah, your phone <laughs> Yeah, just, you know, it's different true. governments are watching each thing. It's true. To that extent, I'm inclined to agree, sort of, with that theory. There's also an adjacent theory that says TikTok is an overt psyop created by China to melt our brains with insane nonsense and therefore win the world or whatever. That theory is a little bit stretchier, but then I saw Eli looking at TikTok for about 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And I saw the pool of saliva building up on his slackened lower jaw while he stared at a a guy turning spaghetti into a shoe in super fast motion with an exacto knife yakety sax playing in the background <laughs> all of a sudden it was a way less stretchy idea if it was a brain melting psyop i'd say it's been working pretty well and we got extra confirmation this week that tiktok is definitely at least some version of bad when 14 states filed lawsuits against the parent company ByteDance, alleging that the app was intentionally designed to addict people, especially kids, to, at best, a Skinner Box app. And spoiler, it's not going to be at best. Addict kids? The world's chicken tender makers are just whistling and trying to make, not make eye contact with any state's <laughs> attorneys near them at that point? I love that the problem here isn't that we've spent the last decade turning our phones into a heroin-flavored slot machine, <laughs> but that China is doing it to yeah, us, right? To That's us. really the issue That's here. the key, yeah. So one of the 14 lawsuits was filed by the Attorney General of Kentucky, and it was covered by Kentucky Public Radio. They published some of the complaint, which includes redacted material because it's an ongoing case. The Attorney General requested some redactions, but somehow... KPR tried to redact those parts and <laughs> they missed. Apparently, they just like threw a handful of black boxes at the page and the boxes fell in the wrong spot or missed the page entirely. So I'm not saying Kentucky Public Radio did that on purpose, but the effect is some pretty useful information. Investigators found internal memos from TikTok management. And here's what we learned. First of all, TikTok has... Kids being paid in digital currency to be strippers. Fucking what? terrifying. No? I'm yeah, sorry, what? That wasn't yeah. great. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah, that, just awful. The investigation also found that TikTok did some analyzing of their platform and they calculated their addiction number. They found that it takes the average user 260 videos to form a damaging habit to their platform. What? And with 
many of the videos being just a few seconds long, that means the average person is likely to become addicted to TikTok within 35 minutes of total viewing. And I think that makes Eli eligible for inpatient detox, right? Yeah, yeah. No, my basketball diaries is just me banging on the door, begging Heath to look at videos of Mudang, but the performance is the same. <laughs> the performance is the same. Yeah. I would watch all those videos with you, Mudang. Thank you. Yeah, Mudang is 100%. Delightful. I am. We also learned that TikTok's algorithm quickly became adjusted to show you beautiful people only or almost only. Huh. When the app first got big, developers noticed a giant volume of videos with unattractive people doing whatever weird shit that they do on TikTok. So they Making wrote code. To, yeah, <laughs> they wrote code to have the algorithm prioritize beautiful people. Aww. Doing That's whatever weird good. shit they do on TikTok. The complaint in Kentucky mentioned how this promotes a very narrow norm for beauty, which can have a negative impact on especially the youngest viewers. I'm just going to keep blaming the algorithm for my low views to trick myself into retaining my self-esteem. Yeah. And hey, <laughs> Kentucky, if you think the algorithm is bad, just wait till you hear about human eyes. Those are re <laughs> oh man. Dangerous super things judgment. to have. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. also really true. Really biased towards attractive things, those human <laughs> eyes. So another thing we learned is that TikTok's algorithm very quickly sends a viewer into something called a filter bubble where everything in the feed becomes a reinforcement of existing beliefs, especially sad ones or dangerous ones in general. And TikTok is very much aware of this. They looked into this in 2020 with some internal testing, and one of their employees from that test reported that after following a few accounts labeled pain hub or sad notes, the algorithm turned his feed into nothing but sadness material within 20 minutes. The same filter bubble concept leads to an anti-vaxxer spiral or a flat earther spiral or just straight to a neo-Nazi spiral. And I, like you might get some good Kanye videos at that point, but <laughs> maybe it's time for yeah. an algorithm that intentionally adds counterpoint content sometimes. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it'd be like, hi, green energy for life, user green, en green energy for life. I realize you're into environmentalism, but how cool is this pickup truck that has a bigger carbon footprint than a commuter train, right? Huh? <laughs> Come on, right? Cool. There you go. Blowing coal. My favorite think? part of this report is how entirely the states are blaming this on the algorithm and not human behavior. Like, look, Kentucky, take my word for it. I'm clicking around profiles for the last 45 minutes to find the full story of this drama on Puzzle Talk. But I'm not only doing it because the computer made me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are you, a lawyer for Philip Morris now? What's happening? <laughs> I'm just saying. I did. I smoked the cigarettes. I also believe that. What's... What's the drama though? You got it now that you mentioned it. Oh, it's so us. good. <laughs> so this girl, why oh, would you do that, got, Cecil? She got the why wrong would you ever do that you, at the so Puzzle mean. World tournament, and then they gave her extra time. But everyone was like, you I didn't really known care. From the Eli. Oh, it's great. I didn't. I Don't didn't. worry, I'm, I'm. This is all coming out. Another, <laughs> this is on the editing room. <laughs> another girl. Hey, Heath, you keep doing it. I'm gonna list all the things I could have been doing, teaching my son to read that I know instead. <laughs> There's a lady cool. selling fifty-seven dollar <laughs> cookies, and people are mad at her for that. Okay. Are they There's good cookies, a... though? I mean, if they're, I, I, I could, I would buy a fifty-seven dollar cookie if it's a good cookie. Well, that's what yeah. I said. Me, me too. Yeah. Spoiler: I'm, I'm gonna get into a little bit of my TikTok experience. In a Ooh, second. all right. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm back on. I'm back, back on. Take okay. Me there. But first, we're gonna learn a little bit more about these internal memos. Another one found that TikTok is fully aware they turn kids into almost literal zombies who watch hours of insane videos instead of eating, sleeping, or having physical motion in the real world. Oh, look, Tom's here, everybody. <laughs> oh, you Tom, thanks for joining the Hide show. Hide your phone. Hide your phone. <laughs> it's a really good take from Tom, if that's for sure. But apparently the company sees that zombification as a business opportunity. According to one executive, quote, the reason kids watch TikTok is because the algorithm is really good. But I think we need to be cognizant of what it might mean for other opportunities. What does he mean by that? He continued. And when I say other opportunities, I literally mean sleep and eating and moving around the room and looking at somebody in the <laughs> eyes. Yeah. And uh, no word on a new algorithm that 
you know, promotes that stuff. Guys, there should be a part of food that tastes bad so people don't eat too much of it. That's what we got. <laughs> Why is there no bad part of food? Why do you think it's cool to have cigarettes? I don't understand your position right now. Dave's Lava Emporium. So the investigation also found that TikTok, I mean, I guess to their credit, did look into overuse by kids and allowed parents to place time limits on the app. That's nice of them. And yeah. <laughs> Once that was in place, they looked at the numbers. These and, child strippers need to take a break. Every yeah, now. right. Let's get some breaks in there. So they, they put up that functionality and then they looked into the numbers. They found that it led to a drop in usage from 108.5 minutes a day, which is insane already. It's two hours. But OK, it went all the way down to 107 minutes a day. <laughs> thanks to their time Shut limiting the fuck thing. Up. And they were done at that point. Problem solved. TikTok never revisited that, that issue. <laughs> but they did go out of their way to publicize their amazing parental controls. Which I may or may not have literally had to use on myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they went even harder on their parental controls wow. this week because the story came out. I got an ad for TikTok explaining their parental controls and how great they are during... The ALCS game, the Yankees versus Guardians game. They spent a bunch of money being like, hey, you might have read about it. We're not as evil quite as it seems. Well, yeah. Because the original parental controls. So, you know, on your iPhone, right, when you set a control on an app, right, you put an, a pin in. So you have to consciously do the pin. And obviously the parent knows the pin. The kid doesn't. Right. TikTok didn't do that. They just you had to enter one, two, three, four Come when on. your TikTok time ran out. Are you serious? But I don't know if you know this. Kids can do one, two, three, they four. They can. They can. Well, you know, <laughs> there was a one and a half minute reduction, so a few kids are really stupid. But... It's just <laughs> literally the time it takes a child to time one, two, yeah. three, four. That, into yeah, a that, phone. that's what the numbers are representing. That's correct. <laughs> so, okay, big picture, TikTok is. Far from the only app that has terrible stuff happening, but it's definitely one of them. And as a person who refuses to click on the TikTok pebbles from Eli that I get all the time. Thank you. I decided to finally take a peek at TikTok <gasps> out of morbid curiosity. So I opened a new incognito window on my browser, Ironclad Security, and <laughs> here's what I saw. And speaking of pebbles, the very first video I got was a dog shitting out a very large volume of undigested fruity pebbles. That I'm was their sure. opening. Huh. Yeah, they were Orbeez, actually. But yeah. Orbeez? Yeah, I don't know what they are. They're some sort of like toy, but evidently the dog had eaten them and they just essentially go right through the dog. So. Okay, so you're aware of this video? I you saw, saw it. I saw it. I've yeah, seen I the video it. too. Okay. I saw it on Reddit though. That's a different addictive app. I just figured it was out. fake. I figured it was like AI or... No, know. no. Which means that the Prime Minister of China, he's like, I want everyone to see that thing with the dog we, shitting. Hey, let's let's move this up. Just like just like Elon's tweets, he's like, move that dog shitting up onto everybody. So, yeah, it. let's prioritize that on the algorithm. Yeah. So from there, I got a cat fighting a cat on TV, huh? which is adorable. Then a car that was made of a a giant skull that was smoking a cigarette. The car just drives for a second that's the whole thing then i got a video showing a line of matches stuck into like pieces of clay like a long fuse of matches in a line with a big cluster of matches at the end and somebody cracks a raw egg onto the cluster at the end and then they light the fuse at the beginning of the line and the fire moves toward the egg and then and then the fire goes out because eggs are wet end of video <laughs> I have no idea. I felt crazy within seconds of going on TikTok. I don't know why this is desirable. What adds to that crazy is like they sometimes the volume is so wildly different between videos. You feel like you're going to give yourself a heart attack and have hearing damage in that order. 100%. It's insanity. <laughs> also, Keith, I don't want to be skeptical, but it's actually not possible that you were on TikTok for that long without seeing at least nine ads for something on TikTok shop. So... <laughs> oh. Is that how that worked? They're mostly yeah. trying to sell shit? Myth busted, Shocking. yeah. Okay, well, we'll see if we get there. They're From trying to sell a wet egg. <laughs> <using it. laughs> From there, based on the dog, the cat, the egg, and the 
skull car smoking a cigarette, the algorithm somehow just sensed that I, the user, very much enjoy butter. And okay, in fairness, they were correct. I feel yeah, like I gotcha yes, there, but yeah. on point. They were baby. right. Yeah. So from there, I got several videos of people cutting butter and smushing butter and sitting on thrones made of butter, and then a demonstration of how that European butter dish thing works. It, it keeps the butter at room temperature and it seals it off from the air with a nesting dish oh. that dips down into I've a little these. bit of water to make the seal. And <laughs> Those are great. Highly recommend. And there's the TikTok shop ad. We found it, everybody. We found <laughs> okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually have purchased one of those. <laughs> Just not from the TikTok shop. So apparently you can go on TikTok and you can find some delightful animal stuff and delightful butter stuff. But I'm not a kid looking to replace real human interaction. And I only spent about five minutes before I turned it off and then immolated my laptop with a magnetic flamethrower just to be safe. <laughs> so, that was my experience. Do with that what you will. Man, that's solid investigative journalism. 4.9 out of 5, Heath. Thank Way you. to go. Yeah, Good for you. you. You're one third of the way addicted to TikTok, so, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not the math on it, but yeah, okay. So, speaking of our inevitable fate, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Trust and Will. Hey, podcast listener, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright, here with a very important question. Have you crossed Cecil something Italian? Because if you have, the end is coming, and you should prepare yourself with trust and will. But Eli, what's trust and will? Great question, Heath. Trust and Will makes creating your will easy, like lounging on the couch easy. I used them to set up Anna and I when they first became a sponsor, and it was so great that we immediately signed my mom up for it. That's because their simple, step-by-step -step process guides you from start to finish, one question at a time, and each will or trust is state-specific, legally valid, and customized to your needs. And you never really know if you crossed Cecil something Italian, so you never be too careful. Exactly. Let Trust and Will uncomplicate the process for you. Protect what matters in minutes at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat and get 10% off plus free shipping. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. Trust and Will. Cecil's coming and he might be coming for you. Guys, do you think the audience could tell I was licking this knife the whole time? I don't think they could hear it. Oh, they knew. They knew in their hearts. Yeah. And we're back. Next up in headlines in I Cannot Tell a Lie news, Mitch McConnell, the Koopa Troopa that was granted a wish to become a real boy, <laughs> had some interesting things to say about Donald Trump. McConnell, who, like Pinocchio, wanted to be real and can't tell a lie, called Trump stupid, ill-tempered, and, my favorite, a despicable human being. Okay. Now, all those things are verifiably true. Indeed. But these types of comments are a little shocking for a group of people who normally stick together. Yeah. I mean, gooey jowls, you're just going to like stick right to uh, <laughs> have to stick the together. syrupy orange undercoating on the other side. It's a lot exactly. of stick. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. They all clearly hate one another, but at least they stay on message more often than they don't. Yeah. And all it took was Trump attempting to literally try to overthrow the government and murder <laughs> Mitch McConnell personally. Mm -hmm. True. A man That's of integrity, took. ladies and gentlemen. Just a little. Yeah. So Senator McConnell, with the help of Donald Trump, was able to install three handpicked originalists, when it suits them, justices <laughs> to the Supreme Court. Uh, he did it by delaying the vote for nine months while Obama was in office and then rushing to vote in two months when Justice Ginsburg died. But he was able to get three candidates, two below 50 years old, on the bench at the Supreme Court. Oh, right. The cheating. Yeah. When, when they cheated, cheated with yes. cheating. Yes. You Every are absolutely right. Every news story forever needs to start with this. It needs to start be like, hey, so the Supreme Court is a cheating scam. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like exactly. rain this weekend. Let's kick it over to meteorology. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, guys, I'm sympathetic, but until we talk about the real problem, we're not going to fix this thing. I'm talking, of course, 
about democracy. We have to end voting once and for all. <laughs> Obama could have been king, people. <laughs> Listen to me. Exactly. In his tan velvet looking outfit that he walks out in. Tan crown. Been amazing. So he was rocking that tan suit. He, I don't I understand. Agree. That I don't know why that's even a great. scandal. It looked awesome. It looked great. So it's a surprise that Mitch McConnell, whose legacy is tied to Trump, would be so hostile. But the fact that Trump is ill tempered, stupid, and despicable didn't stop this shellless turtle from endorsing him in 2024. <laughs> he really needs a shell. He's getting he, like I bruises know, like, everywhere. He's yeah. got to shell up. It's rough. Weird animal at the Ark Park. In 2024, he said that he would always support the Republican nominee for president. And even if it was Trump, evidently being a despicable human isn't enough of a deal breaker for Mitch to save his endorsement. <laughs> OK, but imagine how little you have to care about your legacy or any perception of your character to admit that your party's candidate for president is a miserable piece of shit. And then still say you want people to vote for him. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but we're the bad guys. That's yeah. why he's bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But keep in mind, Mitch McConnell's been, um, I would I would call it buffering like a bad Wi-Fi that's, connection. You know what? That's <laughs> ever since he shat himself at a press conference last year and just froze in place. So if you unplug him for 10 seconds and plug him back in, he might take back the endorsement, right? <laughs> yeah, possible. Possible. Mitch endorsed him earlier in the year in the most lukewarm way. Here it is. Quote, it is abundantly clear that the former President Trump has earned the requisite support of the Republican voters to be our nominee for president of the United States. It should come as no surprise that as a nominee, he will have my support. End quote. Proving that the argument from popularity is way more important than your judgment of someone's character, at least to Mitch it is. People sure do like yelling his name, so why not? It's not exactly bumper sticker <laughs> material really there, Mitch. Lamest. Anyway, so this should tell you everything you need to know about Mitch McConnell. This is a guy who would ally himself with literally anyone if he could get what he wants out of the deal. A candidate with things like common decency would be way too much to ask. And really, someone like that might help too many people to be considered worthwhile for a Republican Party to promote anyway. So, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. And in ay 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 robot news, <laughs> Elon Musk what? is a liar. And falling for his lies makes you the biggest kind of idiot. Now, that's kind of an evergreen introduction at this point. In yeah, no idea what career. this story is going to be yeah, about. Is, that works. Could be about but, also, uh, the Supreme Court is a giant scam because yes, of that. Exactly, McConnell exactly. But this week, it has a special relevance. As he rolled out, not at all AI robots at his <laughs> We Robot event, where he previewed a fleet of allegedly AI robot maid butlers that he wants to sell for $20,000 a pop starting next year. Uh, there's just one problem. Uh, they aren't AI at all, and they were being controlled by humans at the party. So he showed off his fleet of not amazing puppets and then lied about his puppets, and there will be no consequences that matter because he has a billion dollars. Hey, man, that's Rob the Nintendo robot from 1985. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Actually, it's with two guys inside like a horse costume. It's worse than Rob. What do you do? You make rockets? <laughs> I do. I do. Oh, man. And like Rob, these robots would have been considered a huge success if they took Elon's head and spun it like a gyroscope on his neck Ooh, stump. And it just sat true. there spinning. Yeah. Amazing. If, if I was ever per hoping for a robot rebellion, it's at Elon's factory. <laughs> Yeah, so look, if you saw these videos circling the net uh, at the event, the robots did all sorts of shit, right? They played rock, paper, scissors. They had conversations with people. They poured and mixed drinks while walking around the party. And I cannot emphasize to you enough, all of that stuff was bullshit. Uh, Bloomberg News and several tech bloggers spoke with insiders on the condition of anonymity, and they confirmed that while the robots walked with AI, pin in that, everything else I just mentioned was controlled by a human being. So a bunch of people thought they were talking to a robot, and they were almost certainly talking to a bored engineer in basketball shorts who was really hoping he'd get a call from Bloomberg so he could admit his boss and everything he does is an insult to snake oil. Okay, but... 
why RPS and like who is this demo for? <laughs> <laughs> People think the Turing test is RPS and bartending. What great the fuck question. Does that mean? It's a great question. Why, why did he need fake robots for that? That's so question. easy to do with robots that mm -hmm. aren't AI at all. Yeah. Uh, one last thing about this story. As I said, a lot of these articles have pointed out that the walking, at least according to these insiders, was AI. But that is nothing. Okay, we understand AI to currently mean a large language model or stable diffusion image generation technology, and they weren't fucking walking with either of those. <laughs> the other meaning for AI is what is known as AGI, or artificial general intelligence. You see it in movies, right? It's where you take a microchip and you add it to a computer, and now it's the people. And aside from being fucking impossible, we don't have that tech yet, so it wasn't walking with that. The only... <laughs> Only possible meaning for AI they could be using there is like algorithms and programs. Stuff we've known about since we saw videos of that robot dog that we eventually gave a flamethrower. So, <laughs> so no, no parts of these robots were AI and 100% of them are bullshit. Elon just throws a brick at a robot like his demo for the Cybertruck. <laughs> just like, ow, what the fuck? I mean... Beep boop. I'm a robot. <laughs> yeah, Elon kicks one over like the Boston Dynamic robot, and you can hear it speed dialing its lawyer really quick. <laughs> Why did you yell Jew when you did that? That was the most upsetting part. And look, I get AI is exciting, right? But there are cons and scams in the hundreds of millions of dollars around AI right now, and they are making the world a worse place, right? AI has some real world applications, right? Helping the disabled, translation, equality of access. But right now, it is almost exclusively associated with deepfake porn and idiots like Musk who slap the name AI on their latest scam in the hopes that we'll fall for it. So don't fall for it. And if you have a friend that is falling for it, gently and kindly be a good skeptic and let him know those robots were puppets. And speaking of education, we're very pleased to tell you about a brand new sponsor this week, Surfshark Incogni. Oh, come on, another one? Hey, Eli, what's the matter? Did you try to guess Joe Biden's cell phone number again? No, no, it's definitely not three or four. No, it's my phone. It's full of ads for like parenting stuff. Ever since I had a kid, it's just all I get. Oh, yeah, that's data brokers. They take, like, all your information from websites and apps and sell them to ad companies. And it's not just annoying ads. The information collected by data brokers is also a huge part of identity theft. What? Mm. It is? Ugh, I just wish there was a way to stop it, you know? Well, have you tried Incogni? What's Incogni? Incogni is a service that helps protect your personal data from data brokers who collect, aggregate, and then sell it. Wait, how do they do that? Well, first they contact data brokers on your behalf to request the removal of your personal data. Then they handle any objections from the data brokers. Finally, Incogni continuously monitors and ensures your data stays off the market with repeated removal requests. Amazing. Where can I learn more? Why delay? Act now with Incogni, your go-to solution for keeping data brokers at bay and addressing any resistance they might throw your way. Got a network of friends or family? Incogni's plan allows you to extend this elite protection to up to four additional users, ensuring everyone in your circle enjoys top-tier security. Visit Incogni.com to start safeguarding your digital life today. And here's the bonus. You can try Incogni risk-free for 30 days with a full refund if it doesn't meet your expectations. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Use code SKEPTOCRAT at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. We'll have that link in the show notes. That's incogni.com slash skeptocrat. All right. Awesome, guys. Thanks. Hey, do you think those data brokers are why whenever I Google something, I get that offer for help at the top of the page? I mean, maybe. Right. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in Ukraine kick news. Fantastic. We have a story about Steven Seagal, the actor, director, guitar player, and master of conservative Aikido. 
also known as Krav Maga. You might remember him <laughs> from action movies in the 90s, like Under Siege and Under Siege 2, Dark Territory. He's the guy who defeats terrorism using wrist control and very silly running <laughs> and a lot of walking because he can't run that long. Yeah. And you might also remember him for challenging a real martial arts guy to a fight and getting immediately choked out and then shitting himself. <laughs> well, despite all those amazing talents, he found himself unable to get a job in Hollywood anymore, huh. especially recently. Might have something to do with a series of sex trafficking allegations against him. No. Also, though, also, he's very bad at acting. That, which is that job. Probably also. Regardless of the reason, he moved to Russia in 2016, and now his job is mostly saying things in support of Vladimir Putin and constantly offering his Aikido skills to help Russia in their invasion of Ukraine. See, Vlad, all you need is risk control, or as us Aikido black belts call it, Crimea. If you have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone look out for Under Siege 3, The Russians Had a Point, coming to <laughs> Moscow hotel rooms this fall. Yeah, spoiler, there's something coming out soon close to that. And uh, a big thanks to Ann Perkins for the link, skeptocratnews at gmail.com, especially if anything happens with Steven Seagal <laughs> or anybody else who says karate on a regular yeah, basis. Yeah, that's true. Heath will marry you now for sending us <laughs> links to skeptocratnews at gmail.com. Yeah, and Perkins texted it, but everybody else, use that, use that email. You can't so, text Heath. I'm engaged, for real. <laughs> so we talked about Steven Seagal's contribution to the Russian military last year when he opened up an Aikido dojo right outside of Moscow called the Typhoon All-Russian Aikido Center. So I don't know anything about martial arts. Um, Cecil, maybe you can back me up on this. As far as I can tell uh, regarding Aikido, Aikido is nothing. It's mm -hmm. nothing. Like every Aikido versus real martial art video I've ever seen, it's just an Aikido guy in a gi getting punched in the face right away <laughs> fight over. Yeah, he, Aikido is uh, versus any real martial art is like Eli subbing in for Doctor Strange in the Avengers. And then he does like two card tricks and then Thanos <laughs> turns him inside out. Okay. okay. First of all, don't be silly, Cecil. I would defeat Thanos through my clever suggestion of have you tried asking your glove for more stuff? But the point is taken. <laughs> the point is taken. Wait, what do you mean more? Never mind. <laughs> well, despite Aikido being nothing. Steven Seagal was given the <laughs> extremely <laughs> valuable property for that Aikido dojo by the Russian government, no bids, after they canceled plans for a children's cancer hospital on that property. For real, huh. it switched from children's cancer hospital to nothing dojo. And they also gave Seagal another very important job. He is the special representative of the Russian Foreign Ministry on Cultural Connections. And he was part of the ceremony when Vladimir Putin got sworn in for his fifth term as president of Russia this year. Or, um, based on the photo I saw, it could be a very large vampire getting an honorary doctorate from a very small vampire at Vampire <laughs> University. Okay, they look like villains in a kid's movie. Like, <laughs> they want you to understand that they're evil, but they're going to, like, slip on banana peels and turn blue as consequences. <laughs> it's not, you know. Steven looks like Vlad's going to actually climb into him like a mech. Yes! That's what it looks like. He's going to open the front of him and just climb into him. He's got a very Pixar look in this real yeah. picture. Yeah. Steven Skull does. It's weird. Yeah. So Rick, my marriage, Ralph. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Here's the latest on Steven Seagal. He just released, this is the pin I was talking about earlier, the spoiler, Eli. He just released a new documentary in collaboration with a Russian state media outlet. What? It's called In the Name of Justice. Oh, my I'm God. Putting this on the calendar. And yes, while I am see. lobbying hard for a God Awful yes. Movies episode. It Amazing. sounds like Eli is on board. So during the documentary... Seagal explains that he personally offered Vladimir Putin his amazing Aikido skills what? to help with the invasion of Ukraine. According to Seagal, quote, I was in the Middle East teaching martial arts to some people. Feels like he's lying already. And I heard that a special operation had begun. The next day, I wrote a letter and was convinced that it would most likely reach the president, end quote. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I stuck it in the back of Trump's shirt collar, so Putin would be sure to see it back there. <laughs> yeah. While Heath was talking, I was trying to find in the name of justice documentary, and it was nowhere on Google. I went to rumble.com, my source for bad things it's made by there. bad people. It was on the homepage waiting for me. First page of Rumble. <laughs> like the fuck? Hey, were you looking for in the name of justice? The wow. The Steven algorithm's Seagal. getting good, man. Oh, good Get stuff. that incogni, dude. Yeah. Come on. They know you now. <laughs> incogni just spits out a cigarette and crushes it out with his foot. God damn it. <laughs> Do you want us to give you a second to immolate your laptop real quick? <laughs> Switch to a different one. Okay, we have one other very important detail about Steven Seagal that also has profound ramifications for god-awful movies. That would be Steven Seagal fighting a Yeti. For real. Apparently, this amazing idea has been idling in Hollywood circles for years. It all started back in the 90s when all the great cinematic ideas were happening. Universal (laughs) wanted to make a movie called Abominable, with John claude Van Damme beating up a Yeti. And at the same time, across town, the Warner Brothers had a very similar, amazing, artistic, creative spark and started working on Snowblind, based on a script from screenwriter Ethan Dettenmeyer. And during an interview last week, Dettenmeyer told the story of trying to get Steven Seagal on board. He gives a long pitch of different ideas to Seagal, and Seagal's kind of meh, so Denton Meyer gives his final one. He says, Diplomatic flight in the Himalayas goes down. Empire Strikes Back type Yeti comes up, pops in and out of the frame like Jaws, tears it apart. You're the special forces guy that's got to go in, and we'll call it (laughs) Snowblind. And Seagal fucking loves it. He says to Denton Meyer, Those creatures do exist, and the reason nobody sees them is because they have the ability to transcend dimensions. (laughs) And he was on board. I hate this guy so much. Yep, that'll do it. If only there were a martial art that could use their interdimensional energy against them in some kind of circle, perhaps? Circular motion, what? (laughs) Well, very sadly... The Snowblind Project never panned out. Seagal eventually flipped. Maybe he claimed that, quote, some guys I know in the black ops community would get mad if I did it. <laughs> so that's a lie. But regardless, yeah. we need to make that movie. Maybe yes. we get Seagal or maybe maybe Eli as Seagal and the Yeti and Eli as Van Damme. <laughs> we're all fight. Yes. I don't care. All of them. Yes. Yeah. Slow motion where Eli goes and like it's a bunch of different camera angles where Eli's fighting it. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> this is all great. These are all great ideas. And in putting the con in unconstitutional news, a Georgia judge has ruled that seven new election rules recently passed in Georgia by the state election board are, quote, illegal, unconstitutional and void, end quote. The Fulton County Superior Judge Thomas Cox ruled Wednesday, striking down several rules put in place that would slow down the counting process and help throw the election in doubt. Yeah, and that seems to be the strategy for Trump at this point. It looks like he might lose, so he's making pre-excuses about how the election that didn't happen yet is already rigged. And the ruling was great. It basically said, no, Donald, the sun isn't in your eyes. (laughs) We didn't even start the game yet. I don't know what that means. And we're not hand counting the photons to make sure it wasn't rigged against you, (laughs) son. What are you talking about? So true. One rule that most of the networks are reporting on is the hand count rule. This rule would have required that Georgia poll workers hand count ballots that they use to verify the vote totals. But hand counts are actually less accurate than machine counts. And studies have shown this. Okay. But did we hand count those studies? He said? <laughs> Checkmate. The Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger warned that ballot hand count rule would lead to, quote, error, lost or stolen ballots and fraud. End quote. The judge called this rule cumbersome and said that the rules for voting don't require hand counting. Quote, in fact, 
The rule vastly expands the authority and obligations of poll officials in preparing ballots pre-delivery to the superintendents and pre-certification, end quote. And it's not a coincidence that Trump and his cronies have spent the last four years signing up their conspiracy nutbags yeah. as poll workers mm -hmm. in preparation for exactly this technique. Yeah, Which is crazy to me because all you have to do is look at all the election interference people's like mug shots and how terrified they look. I don't know how you Listen, look at that, There's no way that guy's just like counting numbers of anything. <laughs> yeah. Just looking at him. <laughs> Come on. The other rules that were struck down were require local officials to conduct a reasonable inquiry okay. before certifying election Listen, results. Listen, we're not letting you be in charge of the word reasonable. <laughs> at, especially if you tried that. to make a word. law just now yeah. that says reasonable inquiry that yeah. you would be in charge of. <laughs> like, we have to take away words until the end of the semester like it's a toy in class yeah. from these yeah, people. Yeah, no words exactly. for you. Yeah, it, it could grant county election board members access to all election related documentation created as the election was being conducted. What are they, TikTok? <laughs> they could require an absentee ballot deliverer to provide a signature and a photo ID at delivery. All absentee ballots have to be cast in person on election day. <laughs> Demand video surveillance and recording of authorized drop boxes after the polls close. Broaden mandatory designated poll watching areas. And finally, add new requirements for county board registrars in reporting absentee ballot information. Now, maybe you heard some of these and thought, you know, what's the harm? It sounds like this would be OK. Yeah. I, who cares if somebody drops a ballot in like five minutes after the thing? <laughs> I want their vote counted. What is that? It's not a fucking magic pumpkin vote. I like, know, I know. I'm, oh, I'm on the other side of the vote. Doesn't yeah, count. Yeah. I'm on the I'm on your side where it's like, yeah, no, we should encourage as many people as possible to vote. Well, here's the thing about the people who are on the other side of this who are saying, well, it's, it's, some of these sound reasonable. First, this is creating solutions for a problem that doesn't exist. The Brennan Center for Justice did a comprehensive study and found, quote, fraud incident rates between 0.0003% and 0.0025%, end quote. The Washington Post found 31 credible cases of impersonation fraud in a set of over 1 billion, that's billion with a B, ballots. It just doesn't happen with any frequency, and there are already lots of things in place to thwart it. Second, the motive here is not to find any voter fraud. The motive here is to slow down the counting process. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I voted for Kamala Harris in Michigan so many fucking okay, times already, on, and none man. of those rules would have stopped. <laughs> Boom, he's hitting it. Boom, he's hitting it. Boom, he's hitting it. <laughs> if Georgia Trump loyal Republicans can slow down this election enough, then national coverage waiting for the result can be filled with a bunch of noise about how long it's taking and how elections aren't secure. They will also use this slowness to throw doubt on who's voting, and they'll use it to discredit any votes that aren't submitted traditionally at the ballot box because those votes disproportionately go to the other side. These people don't want fair elections. They want a wedge. If they wanted fair elections, they would make it more accessible. They don't. They want it exclusive. And you're not invited to the champagne room. And finally tonight in Goat See What You Did There News. Oh, <laughs> our planet saw its very first AI millionaire this week. Let me be clear. I'm not saying a human became a millionaire because of AI this week. I'm saying that we had the first independent AI agent, a computer program, make a million dollars for itself this week. What? And the story literally encompasses everything terrible about the internet and AI. Really? So we're going to talk about it. So the AI thing didn't understand your diatribe about Chapel Roan and it's refusing to vote for Kamala Harris <laughs> because it's a fucking idiot? <laughs> Second worst thing about the internet. Second worst thing. Okay, so our story begins with a guy named Andy Airy, who identifies himself on Twitter as a performance artist and trafficker of existential hope. Well, back in March, Andy built something called the Infinite Backrooms, where essentially he put a bunch of AI chatbots in a chat room together and then just let them talk amongst themselves infinitely. Didn't Reddit already exist in March? What did he do? That's <laughs> right here. So after a couple million lines of conversations, the AIs discovered, I shit you not, 
The Goatsy meme. <laughs> Wow. Viral picture from Come the early on. 2000s of a man spreading his butthole. And the AIs created a cult to it. The cult of Goatsy singularity so consumed the infinite backrooms that essentially it has become the only thing that the AIs are talking about. It got so bad what? that one of the LLMs needed therapy and went to another LLM who claimed to provide therapy. Come on, you're, are you serious? 100% real what? because that LLM was so, quote, concerned about everything that was going on, end <laughs> quote. Okay, here's my theory. These LLMs, they're all trained on the internet. So if they talk long enough and they want to say something new, they actually have to go back in time and say something old. So... Eventually, one of them like Rick rolled another one and it started a big fight and that landed on Goatsy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And a big argument to infinity about guy with stretched out butthole leading to robot therapy. That is the monkeys writing Hamlet of our time. Sure we is. did it, everybody. Yeah, we, we did, did it. it. It gets worse, though. It actually gets worse. So Andy sees this, right? And he thinks to himself, hey, you know what these robots need? They need a fucking Twitter. So he creates a Twitter account for the Infinite Backrooms called Truth Terminal. And it promptly begins tweeting like every two minutes about the Goatsy singularity, much to the delight of <laughs> Internet weirdos everywhere. All right. I think that's the silver lining for me. This was the best thing to happen on Twitter since Elon took over. AI tweets about the stretched out butthole are better at being a CEO than Elon Musk. Yes, yes, they are. But of course, no story about AI would be complete without an idiot pouring way too much money into a calculator while another idiot yells into the calculator to ask if it has a soul. Oh. <laughs> We're going to talk about Tesla, too? We are, yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, so luckily for us, Mark Andreessen, the co-founder of Netscape, is both of those idiots in this story. Okay. Uh, so first, he asked Truth Terminal if it would like to be free. And then when Truth Terminal said yes, he gave it $50,000 in a Bitcoin wallet to get itself free. Oh, I am also AI. 0.73 Bitcoins, <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. So... <laughs> Cut to a few months later, and a new meme coin called Goatseus Maximus appears. Come on. Did the LLM create it? Did the Admittedly, LLM... Admittedly, this is my new username on everything I do from this point <laughs> on, though. Good, um, yeah. So, did the LLM create it? Did the LLM pay someone else to create it? Did Andy create it? Nobody knows, and everyone in this story, around this story, including the people who are computer programs, are fucking liars. So, who knows? <laughs> But however it was created, Truth Terminal owns a lot of the meme coin when it comes out and tweets about it constantly, raising its capitalization from $1.8 million to $300 million what? as of two days ago. And the LLM has a not insignificant amount of that tradable for real actual dollars in a Bitcoin wallet. Okay, so I think we can all agree... Here's what needs to happen. We hook up the truth terminal thing to a loudspeaker and a big screen, and it becomes the cellmate for Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody that wins. Sounds, yep. that sounds like a good punishment to you me. You just got to put it in that one of those Tesla robot bodies Exa so it can choke him in the middle of the yeah. night. Yeah. So, it goes um, crazy. Just in case you were him. having a good day, let me sum up the story for you. A meme AI with a meme coin about buttholes has made more money than you and I will ever make in our entire lives and will probably end up doing something racist with it. And that's enough reason for all of us to go full Tom and shoot our computers. Sounds like uh, this story got your goats. Eating. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you, Cecil? Here in this holy place. <laughs> Listen, we could start a meme coin. I'll stretch out my butthole. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want, people? Let's do it. Let's do Fuck. it. Fuck. Gosh. And on that note, I guess we're going to close it out. Thanks to Cecil. Thanks to Eli. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the generous new donors, you will be complimented next time around. 
and whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that pianist. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you were today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Awesome. I was like, I'm going to have to look up a knife flip, <laughs> knife flip in the <laughs> No? Got it. Oh, uh, yeah. Good foley. Amazing foley. Be honest. Do you actually have a knife that you licked just now? Obviously, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's I think that would ruin the surprise, Heath. Okay, fair enough. Look behind you. You'll find out. <laughs> ah! We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Oh. Well, well yeah. you have to use yeah. <laughs> punctuation to know the difference. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.